Yeah. I mean, are you uh, are you are you kind of pushing yourself a little bit, revving the engines to get to ninety nine, or is that maybe not intentional? Or? I mean, I think it's just a culmination of the delivery, you know, timing and and things syncing up. Um, you know, I've been been Vila's been really good all spring. Um, you know, I I I think I don't know if I've been quite there, but pretty close. Um, you know, I'm more concerned with how like how easy am I getting there? You know, I don't feel like I'm muscling up to get there. So that's, I'm really happy with that. Gotcha. And then, you know, obviously last year was super strange. Uh, you had to wait how many ever months to get this close to a season. Um, does it feel different? Are you, are you kind of in a better physical place knowing that it's a more normal kind of progression into the season? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I had a lot of question marks in my own head last year. It's like, okay, I feel great, but you know, how long, how long is it going to last? Um, and fortunately I, you know, worked hard with our, our strength guys here to, to stay on top of things and got through the, that short season. And then this year feel, you know, just a lot more prepared body feels, uh, really good and, you know, ready to go and ready to do, do, do 162 this time. And then one more thing, uh, separately, I don't, uh, I'm curious if this is a coincidence or if there's something to it that several players here recently have have mentioned that they uh, found a benefit recently to some some breathing exercises um, specifically within a game. Um, are you having conversations about some techniques, um, sort of focus techniques that that you that you know that you're well aware of that that are helpful? Uh, I mean, I've definitely had some of those conversations. I don't know if it's with the guys that you spoke to, but. Um... You know, I'm a big proponent of it. It's it's a big part of my my life and and my my baseball game. So um, I don't know if that came from me or not, but or maybe something they saw me do. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, you'll see me do it in the clubhouse before the game or whatever, and then try to take things um, kind of quicker things in, into the game too. Just refocus techniques and. Just trying to be really like mindful and keep myself in the present um, when I'm on the mound. You know, I think that's been a big reason I've been able to to be you know consistent uh, the past year. Gotcha. Yeah, and I didn't. I, I mean, I could have asked if it came to you, but I, I was just it was just something kind of noticing. But yeah. But no, that's you. awesome. It's good to hear. Yeah, right on. I'll go to Danielle. Go ahead, Danielle. Hi, Daniel. Um, I was listening to the podcast you were on a couple weeks ago, and you made a really interesting comment about the signature test and how you kind of compare your pitching approach to that. Um, I was kind of wondering if you could expand on that um, and if that's just something you still practice. Well, it's not something I practice. It was just kind of like an illustration for, I, I think what you're referring to is like, I compared, you know, a lot of guys when they struggle, um, hitting or pitching but just you know something they feel like something's mechanically wrong so they go back and watch video of when they were having success and then they try to like recreate that perfect uh perfect mechanics perfect movement um on the field and it's really hard to do when you're just like telling your body the positions to get into so the the illustration i think you're talking about is like if you sign your name you don't think about it and you write your signature and then if i asked you to copy the exact same signature and you went really slow and tried to make every line and everything perfect, it wouldn't look the same, you know, just because there's a certain like beauty and ease and repeatability that comes from just doing something fast with freedom and not thinking about it. So I think that's what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so kind of along those lines, um, when you find yourself overthinking, you know, trying to, um, you know, think about every movement in your pitch, how do you kind of stop yourself from that and take a step back? Uh, I, I just have a really, um, it still happens time to time where I just t find myself maybe missing with a pitch and trying to break it down. And, and I, I've developed kind of a really specific like process, um, mental process to, get myself back on track and I just have like some si simple checkpoints that I go through I mean I it would take me five minutes to explain it but I could do it in my head in like a few seconds between pitches and um, they're really simple things that get me locked back in uh, mentally and physically um, and those breathing exercises that um, you were just talking about earlier are those things that you've done your whole career or something you've picked up you know, in your later years no those are some those are some things I learned um, kind of toward the end of my uh, last 
career <laughs> or before I retired, I think I started to kind of get into that stuff and didn't really have enough time to see the full benefit of it, I think, before I retired. And then and then I worked in the, you know, kind of in the mental skills uh, world, I guess, for two years. So it's a big part of a, a lot of things that are being taught around not just baseball, but all sports. Um, different, you know, meditation, mindfulness, and just like breathing exercises that really help your kind of mind and body like work together rather than fighting each other. So that's that's what I've found. Thank you. Patrick Saunders. Hi, Daniel. A two-part question for you. Um, I was looking through your bio here, your early career with the Red Sox. Uh, the strikeout rate was, was super high. Uh, my question for you is this. Uh, one, are you surprised after everything you've been through and now you're, I believe, 35 years old, that you can still unleash a 99 mile an hour fastball. And the second part of my question is, after all of you've been through, do you think you're a better pitcher now than you were when you were kind of making a big splash with the Red Sox back in the day? Uh, I mean, sometimes I'm surprised that it comes out as hard as it does, but you know, after last year and, and you know, the way things have felt and gone this spring, it's kind of what I expect to myself, you know? I don't think I have to be throwing that hard to get outs, but it's nice, you know. Uh, it's definitely a, a, a perk that I'm not gonna not gonna uh, turn down. Um, and then as far as whether I'm better, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think that time will tell. Um, as I get more more innings under my belt and hopefully a few more seasons, um, I feel better. Like I feel I feel more confident now than I ever have. I feel feel like my delivery is as good as it's ever been, um, you know, which is kind of crazy given the, the ups and downs. But yeah, I think, like I said, I'm a big proponent of, of working hard at the mental game. And for me, like, I, I think I just got, I don't want to say lucky, you know, I put a lot of work into it too, but good genetics play a role, whatever, like to stay healthy and stay, be able to stay strong enough um, this late into my career to throw hard um, has been nice, but I think mentally that's where like, I've really worked hard to put myself in a place where I can allow my body to be, to be free and, and go do the things that we, you know, we all train to do. Um, does that answer your question? It does. And I actually have one more very quick follow. Um, we all know what you went through last year. You were trying to make the team and we all know what happened. Uh, have you been able to allow yourself to to really enjoy the process of spring training this year more than you have in quite a few years. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, you know, I try not to take it for granted and know that you know, while I may not have to make the team, you know, I still had things to prove and, you know, prove that last year wasn't a fluke. Um, so I came in with that mindset, and, you know, in addition to just making sure I'm as physically and mentally prepared as I can be for, for opening day. Um, you know, it has allowed me to do other things, I think, and having like coached for a couple of years, I think I've, I've tried to get more involved in the the game planning that we're doing for, for the pitching, um, scouting reports, things like that, like getting them as concise as possible. And I've worked with, with, uh, with Daryl Scott and uh, Doug Bernier, who does a lot of the advanced stuff and, and really like they've been awesome, working really hard to get everything up to date and, and just take the, you know, everybody's got piles of, of data and analytics now, but it's like, how do you get them to the players? Like, and that's where I think we've worked hard this spring. I've tried to be involved in that, which I would never would have done in the past when I was younger. I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing that. But now it's like, if I can help our other guys in the bullpen and maybe some of our starters, like use those scouting reports and, and, and make them simpler and, and use better information than uh, I've tried to help with that, so it's been fun. I, I've learned a lot, and um, I, I hope I'm hoping it, it makes us a better pitching staff. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Now we go to Thomas Harding, and then finish up with Tracy. Thomas, Daniel, um, under early in your career, did you throw this hard in spring training? Has this always been kind of part of your mo, or did did it take a while to get up to the velocities we're seeing right now? You know, I don't remember. <laughs> I, 
we didn't, you know, like uh, the whole like having the ra uh, radar gun up on the board is kind of a new thing. You know, they used to be scared to put that up in spring training because they thought guys would like pitch to the radar gun and hurt themselves. And now it's like guys are pitching to a radar gun all off season, including myself. And so like you're just used to it, you know. And um, that all that information is just more available now. So I don't know what I was throwing back then. I knew it was like. At times, I'd run it up there pretty hard, but um, no, I, you'd have to go ask my coaches or some scouts that saw me. I'm really not sure. Was that a priority for you in spring training, uh, you know, getting, running it up there pretty hard? I mean, I think you want to see the ability to at least pop those numbers, whatever you're, you know, for me, I know where, what the kind of the top end is for me. I want to at least be able to touch those numbers. Um, you wouldn't want to be sitting three, four, or five miles an hour below and then just hope that it shows up on opening day. At least I wouldn't. Um, so I'd like to at least be able to touch those numbers to know like, okay, it's in there when I need it. When the adrenaline's flowing, uh, we can reach back for it. But I wouldn't say it's a goal. It's just, you just want to come in and feel good. And the, the hitter's reactions tell you everything. You know, If they look comfortable swinging against your fastball, then maybe we need a little more on it and if they're you know if they're uncomfortable swings and you're getting guys late on it but it doesn't matter how hard it is you know the hitters the hitters tell you the most and um do you feel do you feel like as a bullpen you guys feel that guys are where they need to be or uh, right now does it still feel like uh, maybe there's just a little bit more you have to get to be ready for the regular season no i think we're ready i mean i think um I think the roles are going to kind of sort themselves out, you know, uh, what that looks like a month from now, I'm not really sure. Um, but I know we do have a handful of guys throwing the ball really well. Um, you know, some, we might have some big, um, contributions from some names that a lot of people don't know, uh, which is going to be fun to watch. So, um, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I know we got a good group. We got a group that I really roots for each other, which is, uh, not always the case. Um, because we are competing with each other every day at the, in the same, at the same, uh, at the same time. So, but guys want to see each other do well. I, I take it hard when I see one of my boys have a tough outing, um, you know, and just try to support them. And, and, you know, if I can help, I help. If not, you know, just, just be there for them. But I, I think, like I said, we've got the pieces to be a really good bullpen. Um, it's going to take a few guys stepping up. Um, but I hope that happens. Um, last one from me. I, I saw your Instagram post about Mike Bell. Um, that that seemed to happen really fast. Uh, and is he a guy that you'll be thinking about, I guess, throughout the season? Or are there little things you could do to kind of honor what he's done? Well, absolutely, man. It was horrible news the other day. I just found out a few days before I missed the original um, release that he was sick back in early February. Uh, and then I heard maybe – four days ago that um, that he was sick and that it, you know he wasn't doing great but I still thought he's had a couple months to live and I and I got the news you know two days after that that he had passed so just just really tough you know I feel for his family he's got you know young kids and but I I really wanted to emphasize just the impact he had on me my life my career like he was he was my first boss when I uh, ended my playing career and he was like so instrumental and in just like me seeing value in myself and like looking I guess seeing my career in a different light he's like you, you have so much to offer these young guys he was uh, really supportive we had long conversations about about the mental side of the game because we had both had our, our struggles as players he, he and I and long conversations and he just just a really authentic um Great communicator. I, I, you know, I can't say enough good things. But my two years with him, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. Hey, thank you very much. Daniel, you, Daniel uh, how much, how different is your appreciation for what you've accomplished in the last year and a half from when you first got to the big leagues and probably thought you were supposed to be there? No, uh, I think it's, it's pretty different you know I think he when I'm, when I was younger you just kind of um, 
not that you expect it, but I was, you know, I was a high round pick and there was expectations that you show up in the big leagues a couple of years later and, and do well. And I kind of just saw that as the natural progression. Like you get drafted high, you, you pitch your couple of years in the minors and you, you're a big leaguer. And having had it taken away from me, I think you just, uh, you know, you appreciate it a lot more for sure. And I think when you see how, you know, having had it taken away one time, you realize, you know, this stuff doesn't last forever. So I just try to enjoy every day and enjoy the people, enjoy the the fans, enjoy the competition, um, the opportunity to come out here and, and, and compete. So, you know, and then you see, you know, there's been so many injuries this camp, not just our team, but across the league, um, some more serious than others, but you just, it's a constant reminder that, um, you know, we're we're humans and we're fragile and someday it ends you know so i'm i'm just thankful for every day i get to put on a uniform is there other times that you still think back like is this really happening did this did that really get this pack turned around is this for real uh maybe a little bit definitely last year i think it, it would kick in every once in a while and i'd kind of have to like tamp it down and say all right we got we got a job to do tonight um, this year, I, I think it's ha it's been, you know, it's still only been a year, but um, it's been long enough where I feel comfortable in this role and I feel like myself every time I take the ball and, you know, I'm just, just enjoying it and um, trying to get the most out of it. And uh, just finally, Jerry Naren sends his regards. He's very proud of you. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah, tell him I said hello. Hello. All right, uh, looks like Nick Roca, I want to follow up and then we'll finish it up. Nick, go ahead. Hey. Yeah, Daniel, since you mentioned, Mike, is there, and I hate to put you on the spot like this, but is there any any story or anecdote that you remember um, from your time with him your, you know, that might give people who don't know him a sense of who he was as a person? Uh, that might be tough. Well, yeah, let me think for a second. Um, I'm having trouble thinking of, like, a specific story that wouldn't uh, – You know, I don't know if this isn't specific, but he, you know, there, there's guys getting released all the time across pro baseball, like lower level minor leaguers that most people never hear about. And uh, Mike hated releasing guys. I don't think anybody enjoys it, but I, I could tell, I, I saw him come to tears multiple times sitting in, in meetings where he had to release guys. Um, Cause he knew the, the work that went into it, the, the this was these guys' livelihood, their possibly their you know their childhood dream coming to an end, um, and you just don't see that. You don't see tears in a release meeting uh, that often. I'm sure there's other guys out there like that, but I, he was the first I saw, and um, you know he 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 gave you know a lot of chances, second chances to players to to guys like me who you know put me in a coaching role when I couldn't figure my own stuff out. Um, and he just he had d deep belief in guys that they that people deserve second chances. I think there was a couple instances I don't know the names um, of some players who had like some some addiction issues, and no other team would would even touch him. And he gave guys second chances and stuck them out. You know, gave them a gave them a contract, stuck them in double A, triple A to give them another chance to prove themselves after they had you know gone through rehab and things like that which scares a lot of teams away, but he was like, man, these are people and they're, they're battling hard things. And, and he, I don't know, man, he had a heart for those people. Um, and I'll, I'll never forget, forget those, those moments. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for the time, Daniel. Appreciate it.